Next on Worcester News tonight, high bail for the man facing charges in a Hope Cemetery grave robbery. And a solemn tribute as city firefighters honor a fallen hero four years after his death. A somber remembrance tonight of a fallen hero as Worcester firefighters honor one of their own. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McComb. An emotional tribute tonight to one of Worcester's bravest family, friends and fellow firefighters honored the memory of firefighter John Davies. Firefighters gathered at a memorial at Franklin Street Fire Station this evening. Davies died in a fire on Arlington Street four years ago today. Davies and his partner went into the back of a built burning building to search for a missing tenant. A portion of the building collapsed, killing Davies and injuring firefighter Brian Carroll. Davies was a veteran firefighter and part of the department's Elite Rescue One Union. After three weeks of consideration and debate, Worcester's tax rates are set tonight by a narrow city council vote. Councilors voted 6-5 to five for tax line largely supported by residential advocates. It sets the residential rate at $20.61 and the commercial rate at $33.98. The council was divided on the vote as five councilors favored another tax line, which was more favorable for business owners. It led to a more spirited debate tonight. Everybody's a champion of cutting the budget until it actually involves the particular line item. Really is. Easier said than done. So at the end of the day, I, I would hope that we could consider that and also have reflections going forward that a fraction council serves no one. You know, we're going to go into a new council, and I hope nobody accuses anybody of having a fractured council because they disagree. Better we should have debate without a solution than a solution without a debate. The new tax rates for fiscal year 2016 means the median residential bill will increase by a little more than $100. The average business tax bill will rise by $638. Well, a day after Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump suggested the United States not allow Muslims to enter the country, Worcester's Islamic community is speaking out, expressing their disappointment. He's a person of public concern. And, uh, you know, it's very saddening to see that he's so openly making comments that are outright discriminatory and are really contrary to American values of uh, being accepting of foreigners and of giving people the rights to religious freedom. So we're very sad and disappointed to hear um, him coming out with these statements. Now, Trump's comments are sparking criticism from all sides of the political spectrum. Worcester Congressman James McGovern says in a statement, now more than ever, Americans must stand united. We must reject the dangerous ideas of those who seek to divide us. A policy that stigmatizes and isolates Americans of any faith makes us weaker, not stronger. New details tonight about the Connecticut man found with stolen remains from Worcester's Hope Cemetery. He faced charges in Worcester on Tuesday, and prosecutors outlined what he told them about the theft. Olivia Lemon has the story. Amador Medina appears in Worcester District Court Tuesday. The 32-year-old Connecticut man is charged with five counts of breaking into and taking bodies from this mausoleum in Hope Cemetery. Six royal crypts have been broken into, five of those Crips had uh, skeletons removed from caskets. Investigators say Medina told them he is a Santeria priest and wanted the bones for religious reasons. Prosecutors say Medina did show police the remains of three adults and two children in his home. Uh, the defendant had stated that he had uh, purchased these remains from another individual, but he was aware that they did come from the mausoleum and did not have permission to have those remains. Police say the break-in was reported in October. The cemetery tells us they believe the family has no living relatives. City manager Edward Augustus says the mausoleum becomes the city's responsibility if there is no one left in the family to take care of it. We've taken measures to try to make sure that this never happens again in terms of putting additional cameras in at Hope Cemetery and uh, kind of replaced all of the locks on all the mausoleums. Medina was held on $100,000 cash bail and is due back in court on January 5th. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight.
Medina's defense attorney argued for lower bail. He says Medina was supposed to start a new job at Walmart in Connecticut this week. An investigation is underway in Worcester after a woman was hit by a vehicle. The crash happened at East Central and Summer Streets around noon. The victim, described as a woman in her late 20s to early 30s, was taken to the hospital for injuries to her legs. There's no word on her condition, although police say she was talking before being put in an ambulance. The driver of the car that struck her did stop. The cause of a fire on Gate Street in Worcester is under investigation tonight. Now, no one was injured in the one alarm fire, but it displaced 11 people as well as some pets. The electricity had to be cut off to the home. The Red Cross was on scene working to make sure everyone had shelter for the night. Firefighters tell us the cause does not appear to be suspicious. The family of a Worcester woman stabbed to death last week is remembering her in better times. Sharice Hill's mother says mental illness led to her downfall. Family is still trying to make sure Hill gets a proper burial. And our Patricia Nicholas has more. For them to treat my child the way that they did, you know, to slay her the way that they did in the middle of the street and left her for dead is unthinkable. Priscilla Walker is the mother of Sharice Hill, the 31-year-old woman and mother of three who was stabbed to death on Murray Ave last week. Today, her family is remembering the woman they say was the perfect child. So she's an overachiever. I really didn't get to see her that much because she spent so much time and activity. She was always in activities. She was always in stomp. She was always doing talent shows. She was always in something, like she volunteering. She was always getting in something. And all I wanted to do was tag along, you know? I'm going to go. Let me go. Hill received good grades and graduated from Doherty High School. But after being accepted to the Berkeley School of Music, her family says they saw a change in her. She changed overnight, you know? Overnight. I think one of the things that I remember is like, maybe she said like a swear word, and that wasn't like her to even say a little swear word. I didn't understand it. Like, okay. it took me a long time to understand it. I still don't understand it. Um, she just wasn't the same. She was just a different person. She, um, you know, she would say she would hear voices. And, um, and I'm like, Sharice, this isn't you. Are you sure? You know? Her family says it was a downward spiral. Hill was diagnosed with schizophrenia and paranoia. Her family says they did try to get her help. You know, sometimes I feel like I could have, like, I could have I did something better. I should have did something better. But I'm not going to beat myself up with a bat because I know I've done everything. It's like we lost her twice, the first time to the mental illness, and now to this. Patricia Nicholas, Worcester News Tonight. Hill's family has a GoFundMe page. They're trying to raise money for her funeral. A four-alarm fire in Sturbridge destroys a landscaping business overnight. The fire consumed a storage building, and firefighters from more than a dozen communities were called in to help. The fire started around 9.30 on Monday evening at this business off River Road. Sturbridge Fire Chief David Zinther says the storage building is a total loss, and what was inside made it somewhat dangerous for fire crews. We had some explosions. Uh, he had propane in the building. He had acetylene torches in the building, and that's why we had to take a defensive type of an approach. I had to bring this to four alarms primarily because of our challenges of water supply. Our closest water is about three-quarter miles up the road and we had to truck it down uh, one vehicle at a time. There were no reports of any injuries. Firefighters were able to contain the flames and protect neighboring homes. The federal government finds Wyman Gordon in North Grafton citing workplace safety violations. OSHA is finding the aerospace parts manufacturer more than $145,000 for three repeat and 10 serious violations of workplace safety standards. OSHA inspectors found Wyman Gordon employees were exposed to mechanical and electrical hazards. Wyman Gordon has 15 days to comply or contest the findings. The Paxton Board of Selectmen has suspended the license of the Sweet Pea Animal Shelter. Sweet Pea lost a portion of their shelter and more than 50 animals in a fire last month. The cause of the fire is still undetermined. Selectmen say they want to review regulations for all kennels in the town and questions have come up about the conditions for animals at the Sweet Pea Shelter. An employee tells us they're waiting to hear what the town's guidelines are, but she says the suspension will have a negative impact on their operation. It's just been a frenzy and, you know, we're trying to deal with the fire, never mind the bad publicity. 
and you know it's just we're at a standstill unfortunately and it's a tragedy on top of a tragedy you know unfortunately people there are bad people in the world that just have to thrive on other people's tragedies the sweet pea shelter is closed but employees say they are still accepting donations